A little hop along back here for episode, I believe, four on the bandit attack. Um, we've been talking about this and leading up to this for a couple of episodes here. And um, they're pretty much here. They're pretty much upon us. Um, at this point, I am still gathering the last bit of healing salve, checking over my gear, making sure I'm ready, um, making sure that all the barricades that we have in place are up. Another quick time check. I think we're less than 10 minutes at this point. Yeah, less than five. Um, which is ironically still enough time to make some healing appointments if we have enough material. Thankfully, they don't mess with your horse. They don't mess with your crops, I don't think. Um, and another thing um, to remember with this is, so from the moment that you hit that meter, uh, let's bring this volume down. <clears throat> from the moment that you hit that meter that sets off the band of attack, you have six hours and 30 minutes before they show up. But then once they get there, you have two hours, I believe, to defeat them. And so, in theory, and I think I've seen this, um, if you come in to the game at any point in those two hours, um, it's almost kind of coming in fresh. But I like the idea of coming in at the top of the attack and taking them out just as they are barricading the walls. And keep in mind, it takes a minute to find out what angle they're on. Um, I probably should be using the aerial view. I'm going to try that the next time. But... Um, by the time I run around and look around for them, you know, they've already broken in. But from there, the trick is to actually kill them off before they can leave, before the two hours is up. And they shouldn't be uh, able to steal anything from you. Uh, I think we're going to do a time lapse here in just a second. There it is, and there's your countdown, 15, 10, 5, and 1. Let's see how we hold up. So we got 5 bandits. And two, three, four of them are breaking in. So I checked out the wall they normally come in at, but apparently they're on another side. And I don't think I closed my front barricade, but at any rate, we found them. And we're pretty much killing them off with about four blows each. Ideally, won't break any weapons. Some of you guys showed up, but no, no one has gotten away. And nothing stolen. Um, I think repairs are always free, but with the VIP, there is a icon that appears right next to the home icon that will repair everything at once. So that's a benefit. And we learned where the bandits keep their stash. So we're actually going to go plunder their land. Um, for their treasures, their resources, and that will actually supplement our farming. Oh yeah, we need to pick through their pockets, so. Now you see here where you can move the barricades. Um, I neglected to move the one right in front of the front door, but looks like it didn't matter because they came in through the side anyway. And, um... I'm actively currently playing and I think I've fixed that particular wall, made it uh, stronger, so narrowing down their access points.
so oh and you have a limited amount of time I think you have 30 minutes to um, take out their stash and if I remember correctly the notice also says something to the effect of there's probably no one guarding the stash um, there's usually at least one guy um, not very strong and about four treasure chests and then from there it's just whatever is in the land um, a few rabbits trees rocks But it's like a holiday. And it's definitely a situation, you know, great example of trying to make the most of whatever situation. already stored up for um, making the uh, cold gear to go north. But for right now, we are trying to get our bearings apparently. I always take a pickaxe and an axe. Try to see what you can find first, but then, you know, make sure you have the ability to chop wood and to collect minerals and rocks. Um, definitely put on some clothes. And look at that, we didn't even have to use any of our healing stuff, but we have it on hand just in case. None of our weapons are broken. Stock and ready to go, and even though we went out with no shoes, no hat, and no shirts, um, we're only hitting one guy, and we had enough of our own energy to run without using the horse, which is cool. I mean, you're gonna do a lot, and you can do a lot in the beginning without the horse with just letting your energy recharge if you choose to buy energy every so often with the ads that bring free energy you can do a lot in the beginning without the horse um this is just giving you a foretaste of the better things that are to come and there he is one watchman dead more free chests some Pine and some maple. Pine and oak, excuse me. Um, 
some blocks, no minerals. And not seeing much to pick up on the ground either. No animals. Not this time around. And the inventory is pretty much clear. I think we're going to look at trading pretty soon. But you'll see where the um, metal comes in. And there's our second set of the winter gear. How awesome. We didn't even have to make it yet. Um, and those are the two great swords that we got. Or blades. So quite a haul already. It actually looks like we're gonna have to leave some stuff. So I think um, you saw already that I didn't show the components, but I think it, I can still do it um, to build the stable to even get the horse. You need four horseshoes, you need a saddle, a bridle, and stirrups, I believe it was. Um, and then you also need um, about 40 pieces of oak wood board. Um, I think four of the original cloth bag, cloth sack, um, some nails, and a few other odds and ends, and uh, you get the stable and then you get the uh, horse. Um, building the stable itself is pretty easy, it's just those last components that actually go on the horse, but these bandit runs, shootouts, which we'll see. Um, trading um, there are a lot of places to acquire those things even though you can't make them yourself you can make and acquire the things you need to trade for them but um, having duplicates of each of the items that it takes to get the horse those four main components will get you I believe it's a piece of the frame for the broken wagon. And once we've gotten that, I just actually saw a live, oh, excuse me, a um, Let's Play, where someone showed, you know, the, the building of the wagon. And honestly, it said, they said it took them a year. I'm hoping with all the upgrades that have been done, the things that I've been learning from even watching some of the others, that I can do it in less than a year. Um, because I've also already gotten, at this point in actual play, um, two of what I'm assuming is going to be four wagon wheels. But we'll see where things go with that. Um, and if you can imagine, you know, your storage is what it is when you first come in, you upgrade each bag, you get the horse, you get more storage, you get the wagon, you get even more storage. And um, you also have at that point four, a potential four um, options to travel. Um, your basic walk, which is, you know, is your conserving uh, energy, your run, spending energy, your riding with the horse. Um, which spins your oats and then the wagon itself, which I honestly don't know how much what it takes to replenish the wagon. I can imagine it's going to be a combination of um, feeding the horse and the maintenance on the wagon or something, but we'll see. So, um, we pretty much didn't acquire any of the trees and the rocks so we're coming back here and we're kind of emptying out 
everything in preparation, I believe, to go back and do that. Um, it just saves us a trip to the pine forest to a degree, and it will disappear within an hour, whereas the pine forest will be there tomorrow. So a little housekeeping, a little preparation to go out, checking on space, checking on upgrades, keeping the energy and the health up. Gotta put that saddle down. So great two saddles. It's kind of cool, we have two upgrades going at the same time. Um, looks like we were upgrading the wood shop. Which was cool. A cool upgrade because it's helped us to upgrade a number of other things. I think the most painful thing is the upgrades that take a long time, like the uh, table. Um, I think the table was the longest one for me, which was two days and 12 hours. Um, and then even in preparation for that, I was just making as much of the clothing as I could make and store, um, knowing that it would be down for two days. And um, while it was down, it helped me to not spend some resources, learn how to maximize the resources I have, like even the idea of taking the clothes off of the bandits that attack you. Um, probably where I came up with the idea of doing stuff like this, you know, go back into each of those scenarios. If there's a tree, if there's a rock, take it. For the most part. So, um, Should be entering in any second here. Alright, so you know there's no one else here, there's no other animals. So it's pretty much a grab fest. And thankfully, we are doing it in double time because of the VIP ticket. I can only imagine some of the veterans, man, especially some of the people that I was watching um, from their Let's Plays, you know, looking at this and thinking, wow, he has such a long way to go. But at the same time, he got to skip through a number of things because of the upgrades, because he spent some money. Um... But I guess it's just like the game in that respect. Using whatever resource you have on hand within reason. And I can so appreciate the time that it takes to make these. Um, you know, I'm a fan of watching them. I've never watched anyone do this one until I started making it myself, but um, I've enjoyed a number of others. Hopefully this won't take very long. And this is just really that whole idea of living off the land, you know, scooping up whatever we can scoop up, turn it, flip it, um, reinvest it back into the most basic tools. Whatever's letting you learn, whatever's gonna let you carry out what you feel in that moment, depending on your priorities gives you the biggest shield for having come back. But I think we're going to get to a place where we see that there are no resources to collect. And that for me is a clean plate a job well done.
and always take advantage of a tool that's about to break in the sense of the storage that it can free up Take advantage of the fact that we are not coming back. And there are a lot of trees. And we can make some stone axes. At this point, a bigger priority for me would be the wood. It's used for cooking, used for forging, forging things building things more so than the rock so we're sacrificing the rocks that we picked up with the stone pickaxe to make the stone axe to take the wood still kind of looking maple over there but it would be cool if we could tear down that house. That's a lot of wood nails. So, we about to all out, more resources to collect, ride home, sort me out. I think at this point we just noticed that everything can fit in our pack so it's just one click of the inventory button good time to use the horse I guess for me a trick with this game has uh, been to always figure out what you can do, how to do the most with the least. Which is such a metaphor for life. So we gotta work on or And I think at this point we have all been avoiding the stone plateau. I think we were on our way there before the bandits showed up and uh, gave us something else to think about. So we, barring any interruptions from trading opportunities which are timed, uh, we should be headed to Stone Plateau to start getting some copper on the next episode. And we'll see that in about a second here based on what I'm collecting at the time. And I do apologize for the gap in the time of me recording these. Um, while playing and then recording while speaking um, and it hurts me to you know maybe at some point figure out you know ability to play and to provide voiceover and do some things with some graphics I'm definitely appreciating the graphics and the uh, captions At this point, we're just seeing what we can do with what we brought back. 
I think we're going to see the Wendigo on the next episode, too, because it's pretty dark now. And I never noticed for sure, but I think the lanterns are either on when you are cooking something at night or it's about the actual number of lanterns because you do trade lanterns but you don't put them I don't believe when you first build the workshops um, it's been a minute since I've done those so I do not remember uh, we do know that we're going to need some nails to build the floors and the walls we need a lot more in terms of metals Definitely need a lot more in terms of metals. Want to hold on to um, making that gun. We really want the Beretta. I'm a few episodes from now in terms of actual play, and we have not reacquired the Beretta yet. I think it's one of the things we lost in the um, dry forest with all of the attackers. Oh, sorry about that. And a lot of the videos honestly are screwed up because of my um, notifications and responding to notifications during the actual play. But then there's recording again for the voiceover and so that's all the more reason to figure out a way to do all in one. Hopefully you guys like the uh, bumpers, the little intro graphic, let's play, and the outro. I thought it was pretty creative, but I want to change it up every so often. So we're looking at grabbing copper at the stone plateau. And yeah, you're going to see us uh, pretty basic here in terms of our gear for a while, I think. Because the closet is getting empty and we can't make them close just yet. But we're in a good place in terms of the materials already being fully stocked. Key component and travel. Can you heal? Can you eat to heal? We're in a good place with two pieces of dynamite. Thankfully, we only have to use them once per scene so far. I can imagine, though, that the mines are going to get more difficult. I'm thinking of this basic shirt and pants here. I don't think we have the most basic shoes. And it's probably going to be a while before you see us consistently wearing shoes. That capote, capote, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, or compote, um, pretty good on terms of filling you up. And to the point that you can actually take meat out in the field. I love how much feeding the horse just one grain. I think it gives you 25. So, you know, it more than doubles your energy um, production. And 
your ability to travel and go more places in a given day. And I think you'll see at some point in the way that I play, it pretty much is always at some point energy being gathered while being spent the least amount of times as possible. Um, that even comes into the idea of, you know, just totally raiding a place. You know, if I don't have to come back and forth that often because I took every resource each time um, and the time it takes, your energy replenishes. So it pretty much works. Um, here we just want to have uh, some projectile weapons. See what we can kind of build in our absence. What can we repair? Just gotta gear up and go at this point. Lots of bronze to be made. And I think it's just time to pick our gun, speed the horse, and bug out. Just a little experiment here. Uh, an idea here is to use the revolver on uh, people and the uh, Rifle for the uh, rabbits and wolves. So um, that's where we're headed next. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And look forward to more information about our Patreon account. Thanks.